بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا كريم Dear colleagues, this is uh, just an introduction to the musculoskeletal imaging. I am uh, Mamdouh Mahfouz, Professor of Radiology, Cairo University. Uh, I welcome all you, all of you, in this uh, course, which is designed uh, to show the uh, diagnostic value of each of the available imaging modalities. Uh, nowadays in the evaluation of the musculoskeletal system and uh, this will be a quick uh, review and uh, you will know that imaging is a very essential tool for uh, evaluation of the anatomy and pathology of the uh, musculoskeletal system and other systems in the human body and uh, uh, also, it is very important in the follow-up uh, of the disease after therapy and uh, the evaluation of the prognosis of each, uh, each disease. Then, uh, the objectives of, the, of this course uh, will include the following items. By the end of this course, the candidates will be able to describe the modalities and the techniques used in imaging of the musculoskeletal system, as I will mention. This will include the plain X-rays, the ultrasound, the CT, MRI, uh, bone scan, and other imaging techniques. Then you should know that uh, the you should know the most common indications for the use of each of these modalities then you should be able to select the suitable image modality relative to a particular disease. Then, and I will demonstrate for all of you how to utilize the available imaging techniques in approaching the, uh, the disease and the differential diagnosis of each of these diseases. Then, um, the imaging modalities available here, and you should have an idea about all of them, the plain radiographs, <clears throat> the ultrasound, and the, the Doppler examinations, the CT scan, MRI, and the, the nuclear imaging, uh, of course, the bone scan, and uh, something about the values of bed CT. <clears throat> Then these are the imaging modalities, the plain X-rays, the contrast radiography, which is no more used in our practice, but I will uh, give you an idea about this. Then uh, the CT scan, the MRI, ultrasound, and the, the nuclear scanning, as I mentioned, bone scan and bed CT. Then there are two very important issues for everyone who is dealing with radiology. Number one is the cost of each of these modalities. And number two is the hazards, particularly the radiation hazards, which may complicate some of these imaging techniques. Then this is a list which may give you an idea. It is not applicable in Egypt, but it, it gives a, a global idea about the cost of the uh, techniques. And then if we say that the plane radiography will, the cost will stand for one, then the ultrasound will be double the cost of the plane X-ray. Maybe in Egypt, to triple the cost. Arthrography will be four times, and the uh, radionuclide scanning bony scan is about seven times, while PET scan may reach about 20 times or even more the, uh, the value of the plane X-ray. Then CT is about eight uh, times the plane radiography. MRI ranges between 18 and 20 times the cost of the plane X-ray. This is not actually the cost in Egypt, 
but uh, you may have just a simple idea about this. Then we'll start by the plain radiograph. X-ray usually entails that the patient will be exposed to radiation, but of course the radiation dose from the X-ray is much lesser than the radiation dose from bone scan, for example, and also less than the radiation dose of CT scan. And here, uh, the image plane radiographs are very essential. They are relatively inexpensive. They are readily available everywhere. And they, this is a very quick examination. And also, it gives a specific imaging uh, findings that may help us in the uh, differential diagnosis. And uh, we have a rule in the radiology department or in the radiology practice, if you have a plain X-ray for the part examined by MRI or CT, it will facilitate much the interpretation of these techniques, including the CT and the MRI. Then X-rays are very valuable in detection of fractures of the extremities and the spine. It uh, can detect easily the presence of periosteal reaction, which may be secondary to infection or tumors. It is an essential modality for evaluation of bone tumors. And uh, it is stated, frankly, that X-rays should not be omitted whenever you are evaluating a case of bone tumor. Then screening for degenerative diseases of the spine and joints, osteoarthritis, spondylosis, can be first diagnosed by the plain radiographs. And if the findings can explain the patient symptoms, then you have reached the diagnosis. But if the patient complaint could not be explained on the basis of X-ray finding, you may need further evaluation like CT or even MRI. Then X-ray is very valuable in detection of calcium in the soft tissues and also the detection of gas. And the presence of gas in the soft tissues may indicate an underlying infection. One of the important uh, uh, items to be mentioned here that if you are confronted with a patient who will be regularly examined by uh, x-rays for follow-up of a certain disease or uh, the, to, to assess the progression or the regression of the pathology, then you should you should weight the uh, benefits against the risk of radiation. This is very important in our practice, is to take care about your patient, considering the cost of the imaging technique and considering the radiation hazards. When you, this is an example, I will uh, explain all these items in uh, extreme details whenever we have the specific lecture for each of them. And this is a fracture of the radius and it can be easily evaluated by this plain X-ray. In contrast, radiography, as I have mentioned, have regressed uh, much uh, more recently in, in, uh, against the uh, uh, new imaging techniques, including the multi-detector CT and MRI. Uh, these techniques were used previously uh, very commonly in evaluation of the spine and joints. And these include myelography, arthrography, and angiography. And uh, whenever you are using contrast material in, uh, in x-rays, then you should regard against a new complication, which is the possibility of developing allergic reaction if the patient is allergic. Then, uh, what's myelography? Myelography means that you inject some contrast material inside of the spinal canal and you put the patient in the, setic, in the sitting or in the lying position on his side or in his, on his or prone on his abdomen and you uh, sterilize his back and identify the midline uh, plane and uh, you feel by your thumb the spinous processes of the vertebrae and you select the suitable level 
to introduce the needle, the lumbar puncture needle, between the spinous processes, possibly or uh, more commonly between L3 and L4. Then you reach the spinal canal, you remove the needle core, and you get some drops of CSF. Then you inject the contrast material, which is known as Omnibake. And we inject usually 10 milliliters inside the spinal canal. Then if you have the x-rays, you will see the contrast material inside the spinal canal. And this is the frontal view. This is an oblique view. And this is the lateral view. And if the patient had a disc lesion, the disc will go inside the spinal canal and it will compress the contrast material. And this was the way by which we diagnosed such lesions. And here you can see at L45 level, there is an impression uh, opposite the disc and there is also a small impression here. And this is uh, indicative of a disc uh, bulge at these levels. Then if you want to, to look at the cervical spine, you inject the contrast material in the lumbar spine, then you tilt the table until the contrast material reaches the cervical spine, then you have the radiographs. And this is the frontal radiograph and this is the lateral radiograph. And you can see that the, the contrast material is lying against the posterior aspect of the vertebrae and the discs so that if there is a very small disc that can uh, extend inside the spinal canal, it will cause indentation or compression on the contrast material. Then the second technique is arthrography, and it was commonly used for the knee joint. We, as you can see here, we sterilize this area, then we, uh, uh, we identify the patella by the left hand, and we introduce by the right hand a needle inside the knee joint below the, the articula, below the surface of the patella. Then after injecting the contrast material, we uh, have images, and these images will show the meniscus. This is the uh, horn of the meniscus, and if it is uh, healthy, you see that uh, uh, you see the meniscus as a failing defect covered by contrast media along its uh, superior surface and inferior surface. But if there is a tear in the meniscus, then the contrast material will extend inside the torn part of the meniscus. And this was the way by which we diagnose meniscal tears. And nowadays you can have an, a simple, easy, non-invasive technique, which is MRI, so that you can see the horn of the meniscus. And if there is any abnormal signal, inside the meniscus, as I will mention in details in the lecture of the knee joint, then you can uh, diagnose meniscal degenerations and meniscal tears. Also, uh, arthrography was performed commonly for the shoulder and for the hip, and also it can be performed for the rest and elbow joints, and it entails the injection of contrast material inside the joint and to have the plain radiographs in the hip, we assist usually the labrum for any possibility of labral tears. Then we came to the ultrasound. The ultrasound is one of the important imaging techniques in evaluation of the musculoskeletal system, provided that you have an expert sonographer uh, that can deal with this uh, very, very informative technique. The advantages of ultrasound include that it is available, it is uh, provided in portable uh, machines that can go to the patient bed, it can go inside the intensive care units, and it can go to the patient home. Then this is a very, very important imaging tool. And it also provides a real-time scanning and you see what you are looking for. And more, there is no radiation hazards, and there is good soft tissue contrast resolution. This is an ultrasound of the hip, which is uh, uh, one of the modalities commonly seen for evaluation of the uh, congenital hip dislocation. Also, ultrasound, you push the button, then you have the Doppler facility to see the vessels. And if you compare the cost of ultrasound against CT and MRI, it is relatively, of course, of lower cost.
And the major disadvantage of ultrasound is that this technique is operator dependent. If you uh, have uh, an expert sonographer, you will got you will get uh, uh, good results and good diagnostic imaging uh, information. But uh, uh, of course, in Egypt we have a limited number of uh, of uh, radiologists who can master the musculoskeletal ultrasound. Then ultrasound cannot penetrate bone or air, and this is one of the drawbacks. And it is also insensitive for the detection of calcium. And ultrasound is one of the major diagnostic tool in the musculoskeletal system, as I have mentioned, and it has a major role in evaluation of bone tumors, including the differential diagnosis or differentiating solid from cystic lesions, and it uh, can also show the presence of fat inside the tumor, blood, and sometimes if calcium is big, it can appear by ultrasound. Also, the Doppler ultrasound can assess the vascularity of the tumor, and it also can guide you to the viable tissue of the tumor if you are going to have a needle biopsy. Then we came to the uh, uh, computed tomography or the CT scan, and CT scan is one, of course, of the most important uh, diagnostic uh, imaging modalities for evaluation of the musculoskeletal system, especially after the introduction of the multi-detector uh, CT. Then by this CT, you are able to have 2D images and also you have 3D images, which are very valuable in a diagnosis. As you all know that the CT machine is, is composed of a big box, which is known as the gantry, and the bed where the patient lies. Then if you open the gantry, which is frequently opened for maintenance, and you can see the X-ray tube, and in front of the tube, there is the X-ray detector, or uh, what, what stands for the X-ray film in conventional radiography. And in order to have a, a CT section in the human body, then this is the tube, and this is the detector, and this is the patient. The tube and the detector should rotate a full circle around the patient. And in the older machine, this was impossible because the tube is connected to the ground by the electricity cables. Then the tube can only rotate half a circle and go back to the original side, then rotate in the opposite direction and go back once more. Then in order to have a single section in the human body, the tube and the detector have to move four times. And uh, this machine is no longer being manufactured because it has been replaced by what is known as the spiral CT. In the spiral CT, we, we are able to introduce current to the tube without cables connected to the ground. Then the tube is uh, rotating a full circle without a stoppage around the patient. Meanwhile, we uh, 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 could be able to move the bed while the tube is, rotated, the, is rotating, then the bed is moving and we got what looks like a spiral and hence the name, the spiral city. Spiral city has dramatically decreased the examination time and it enables the formation of 2D and the 3D images. The spiral city, you have a tube and you have a detector. And uh, by every tube rotation, you have a single section in the human body. Every tube rotation, you got a single section in the human body. Then the new machine is just about is just instead of having a single detector in front of the X-ray tube, we have more detectors. Let us say we have four detectors in front of the X-ray tube. Then for every tube rotation, you have four sections. For every tube rotation, you have four sections. Then 
Hence the name multi slice, multi sections, or multi detector, multiple detectors in front of the X ray tube. This machine is very rapid and uh, the, the, the speed of scanning depends on the number of the detectors in front of the uh, X ray tube. And the latest machine of this multi detector CT includes 640 detectors in front of the X ray tube. And hence you can imagine how fast these uh, uh, machines. Then the, the machines will provide these very important uh, advantages. Number one, very rapid scanning, no patient waiting list, vertical reconstruction, and you can reconstruct the images in 2D and 3D images, vascular imaging. There Nowadays, there are no need to introduce catheters inside the vessels and inject contrast material, which was uh, 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 called conventional angiography, but we in inject the contrast material in the vein and let the CT machine trace the uh, contrast material and can image any vessel in the human body, whether it is an artery or vein. Then virtual endoscopy is also one of the advantages of this machine so that you can go inside any of the tubes inside the human body using the virtual endoscope like the esophagus, the trachea, the stomach, the colon, the ureter, the artery, the vein, any tube you can go inside. Of course, during this course, I will explain these findings in, uh, uh, in full details. Then these are just an exa examples for the valuable uh, the values of uh, CT and evaluation of the musculoskeletal system. This patient with hip pain, the plain X-ray showed almost normal findings. The multi-detector CT with 2D reconstruction showed there is a fracture line in the uh, region of the greater trochanter. And the MRI coronal T1 showed the extent of the fracture through the proximal part of the femur surrounded by bone marrow edema. And this patient with trauma to the ankle, these are both ankles showing almost normal findings. And this is the 2D reconstructed CT image showing that there is one of the solteralis fractures I will explain in details, uh, going through the epiphysis of the, uh, uh, the distal epiphysis of the tibia. Then in the spine, this machine is very, very valuable in evaluation of the fractures. You see by the plane film, there is a fracture uh, uh, spine at the level of uh, L2 and L3, but you can see the details of the fracture, the displacement of the bone fragments inside the spinal canal and by the CT. Also, you can uh, reconstruct the images in 3D and 2D ways, and also you can obtain images in color. Like this is a 2D reconstruction of a normal pediatric hip, and this is the 3D images of the same case. And here you see a slip decapital femoral epiphysis on the right side, and uh, this is the 3D image showing the slip decapital femoral epiphysis. And also by the plain film, you may not be able to see osteochondral lesions. And by CT, you can see it also by MRI, you can demonstrate the injury of the cartilage and the injury of the bone, as I will mention in details. And this is the arthroscopic finding showing the osteochondral defect. And this uh, uh, X-ray of the pelvis and the hip joints of a female child, 10 years old, we, who, have, uh, who has a... Uh, uh, painful left hip and if you look uh, carefully for the hip here and the hip there you, you may not be able to uh, find any abnormality but if you see the CT scan and you see the classic appearance of an osteoid osteoma in the proximal part of the femur with a calcified spot inside the lesion if you go back to the uh, plain film then you can see you can see the lesion and you can see the sclerotic reaction around the lesion. Also, you can use, as I have mentioned, the CT to show the vessels 
especially in cases of fractures like this case and you want to know the state of the popliteal artery in a comminuted distal fracture femur and then instead of introducing needles in the femoral artery and giving the patient general anesthesia and in, you just introduce a cannula in the cubital vein injecting contrast material then say to the machine i would like to see the femoral circulation then the machine is programmed at the time where the contrast material will reach the site of the femoral uh, arteries then start the scanning then you can see the femoral arteries and you can see the normal circulation on the right side and the occluded femoral artery on the left side and this is another patient showing normal finding on both sides then one of the very important issues here especially if you are uh, dealing with multi-detector which is now the only machine in the market all the spiral cities are no more no no longer uh, uh, manufactured and also the incremental CT, the, the first CT is no more uh, uh, manufactured. The only available machine here is the multi-detector, which is a machine uh, uh, that has a big radiation risk, especially whenever the detectors are, uh, the number of the detectors is high. Then you should, you should, you should uh, 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 wait the risk of radiation against the benefits of the patient from this particular machine. Then we came to the MRI and the, the MRI, there is no radiation hazards, but MRI has a superior soft tissue uh, contrast compared to the CT. It has a multiplanar imaging, meaning that the MRI can examine the patient in the axial in the transverse, I mean, transverse sections, in the coronal, in the sagittal planes, and any plane you would like. The multi-detector CT is now able to reconstruct the images in sagittal, coronal, and oblique uh, views as well. And there is no artifacts from bone. Also, the multi-detector CT has a software that can remove artifacts from the bone. On the MRI is able to characterize tissues, I will explain in full details the physical principle of uh, MRI in a dependent lecture. Then we have four types of MR machines. The closed MRI, where the magnet is closed all around the patient, is open only at the patient's head and feet. Then we have the open MRI, where there is a big space around the patient for whom uh, uh, who are uh, claustrophobic to the uh, uh, closed MRI. And this is a very valuable machine, which is uh, not until now available in Egypt, which is the extremity MRI, where uh, the machine is very small and it can examine the lower limb and also can examine the upper limb. The fourth type of MRI is the dynamic one which you can examine the patient while standing and while recumbent as well. And the benefits of this MRI are very valuable in examination of the spine, particularly the post-operative spine. And this is just an example. This patient had an operation at the lower uh, part of his back and he is still complaining after uh, surgery but the supine MRI showed that the site of surgery is good. There is no complications at all. Then after examining the patient while he is standing, meaning that he is doing an axial load on the spine, then there is a major instability at this level L3-4 and there is marked narrowing of the spinal canal at this level and this is the cause of the patient pain and this machine was only introduced uh, for examination of the spine but now it can examine all parts of the human body the shoulder the hip the wrist uh, anywhere and you should know that for an MR machine to examine the patient you should have a surface coil and this surface coil is almost similar to the probe of the ultrasound. 
it is a, a, a part of the machine that uh, is put closely to the desired anatomic area to be examined. The best surface coil has two main categories. Number one, it is very close to the area to be examined. Number two, it does not move with respiration. So the surface coil of the spine is like this. And the patient lies on this coil as if he is lying on bed. Then the coil is very close to the spine and it cannot move with respiration. And this is the chest coil where this segment is a little bit elevated away from the anterior chest wall so that it cannot move with respiration. And this is the breast coil. The patient lies prone on this coil and each breast is uh, put into one of these holes. So the breast coil, the coil is very close to the breast and it cannot move with respiration. And this is an example of a coil which is used for evaluation of the knee. You should know that there are absolute contraindications to MRI and these include the patients with cardiac pacemakers and this uh, metallic pacemaker will be disturbed if the patient is inside the MR room. Also patients with uh, cl metallic collapses for intracranial aneurysms. Uh, uh, one of the ways to treat intracranial aneurysms is to put a cl metallic clip at the neck of the aneurysm and you leave the metallic clip intracranially. Then the blood inside the aneurysm will be clotted and you consider healing. If this patient is went, is went inside the, the MR room, then the MR will uh, try to move this metallic base from each side and it may result in, in reopening of the neck of the aneurysm and intracranial hemorrhage. Also metallic objects inside the eye, metallic objects near the spinal cord, the cochlear implant, insulin bump and the neurostimulators and you should be very careful about these cases whenever they are going to uh, perform MRI examination. And we have some limitations for MR, including number one, it is very expensive compared to X-ray, ultrasound, and CT. And the um, MRI is, in most of the countries except Egypt, have, has a limited availability. But in Egypt, MRI is available as similar as the X-rays. And I, I will explain this in the uh, uh, coming lectures, inshallah. Uh, because of the lengthy time of uh, MRI relative to the CT and the ultrasound, the children may require some anesthesia. And also, there are some contraindications to MRI. Some patients cannot perform this MRI, as I have mentioned. And also, MRI is insensitive for calcium detection. You will uh, know the explanation of this in the lecture of MRI. MRI is not that safe in pregnancy. It, it is not uh, hazardous, but it is not proved to be safe, especially in the early trimester of uh, pregnancy. And also, uh, uh, the examination may be uncomfortable because of the long time and the noise produced by the machine and also the claustrophobic patients may suffer much from these closed machines. Finally, we came to the bone scan and the, the, the famous statement about the bone scan is that it is sensitive but not specific. Bone scan is a way to screen the skeleton using an intravenously injected isotope, which is commonly the technetium 99M. This bone scan will show the abnormal areas as hot spots or areas of increased uptake of the injected tracer. And it is very valuable in detection of occult fractures, in detection of infections, in evaluation of bone tumors, and also in assessment of skeletal metastasis. 
What I mean by sensitive but not specific is that by bone scan, you are able to say that there is an abnormality here, but you cannot, you cannot say what is this abnormality. Is it a metastasis or is it a fracture or is it a small fibrous dysplasia, for example? There are a lot of differential diagnosis for an area with increased uptake in the skeleton, then the bone scan should be interpreted in conjunction with other imaging techniques. But it is very valuable for screening the skeleton and it can show the whole, the whole skeleton and it can spot the areas of abnormality, but it cannot say for sure what is this abnormality. Then uh, uh, you should consider also the radiation dose and uh, the bone scan is in between x-rays and the CT. The dose is, is more than that of the x-rays and less than that of the CT scan. And look for this uh, a, a case where the patient had a painful heel. Then uh, the bone scan showed the brain x-ray was normal and the bone scan shows an area of increased uptake here. Then what do you think of this? Is it a fracture? Is it an infection? Is it a tumor? Then this is MRI, which showed the stress fracture in the posterior part of the, of the calcaneus. Then look at this uh, spine of a patient, a child with a painful back. Then if you look carefully to, to the spine, you may not able may not be able to detect an abnormality, but if you look here and you can see that there is some sclerosis in this pedicle and by bone scan, there is increased uptake in this pedicle, which was secondary to an osteoid osteoma. Also, the detection of metastatic disease is, uh, uh, is easy by bone scan, but consider the uh, uh, non-specificity or the poor specificity for uh, this machine. Also, the uh, bone scan is not available actually in all imaging departments and uh, it cannot be available for 24 hours. The bone scan is not considered as an emergency tool. Then there is a moderate radiation risk between the brain film and the CT scan uh, also, bone scan may be difficult to be interpreted in the children because of the activity of the gross plate of the joints and the vertebrae, which will show increased uptake normally because these are growing uh, epiphyses. Also, look at this example of a male patient, 52 years old, with diabetes and painful ankle and left leg cellulitis. And you look to the brain X-ray, and you can see that the brain X-rays are normal. Look to the bone scan, and you can see increased uptake in the uh, uh, in the uh, middle part of the foot. And you go back to the brain X-ray, and you look carefully, and you cannot see any abnormality in the metatarsus. But this is uh, by uh, one of the techniques that has been used before the introduction of PET-CT, which was known as SPECT-CT, and this is Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography. It, is, uh, it has the, uh, the advantages of bone scan together with the advantages of CT, so that you can see the areas. If you look here in the bone scan, you cannot know which of the tarsal bones affected. But if you look here and you can see, you can specify the affected tarsal bones and the metatarsals as well because of the uh, added value of the CT to the bone scan. Then this is the one of the newly introduced machines, which is the bed CT. Bed is positron emission tomography, which is coupled by the CT to improve the anatomic details. Then uh, bed CT uses uh, isotopes that are of uh, very short half-life. And these isotopes are labeled to glucose usually in order to be taken by the metabolically active uh, areas in the body. 
then uh, these are the uh, available isotopes and we usually use the fluorine 18 which has the best half-life and uh, this enables the transportation of the uh, of the isotope from the cyclotron to the area where it can be uh, it can be used for imaging then we use the glucose analog labeled by uh, fluorine 18 for this uh, uh, imaging uh, of bet ct scan this uh, uh, isotope is taken by metabolically active areas in the human body whether they are soft tissues or bones then this is one of the values of bet ct it can show also soft tissues ab soft tissue abnormality this is a coronal reconstructed CT image, and this is a, an image obtained by BET. BET uh, uh, was, first was first introduced as a single machine, BET, without CT. Then later on, it was coupled by CT to improve the anatomic details in order to know what is this and what is that. And uh, by uh, uh, BET CT, he can know that uh, this is the urinary bladder and this is located in the pelvic bones. Then the combination of BET and the CT are valuable in detection of metabolically active lesions like fractures, arthroposes and the degenerative diseases of the spine, tumors and the tumor-like uh, structures in the bone. And it's also very valuable in post-operative evaluation to look for uh, residual tumor, for example, or post-operative uh, complications. I will give you only one example so that you can appreciate the, uh, the, 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 the value or the size or the location of PET CT in the battery of imaging modalities. This patient had a non-small cell lung cancer and it has a pain in the pelvis. Bed CT showed there is an increased area of uptake here, which can be easily interpreted as metastatic deposit. But the CT scan of the bed CT showed that this is just a fracture. A fracture it will show high uptake, and also metastasis will show high uptake. Then we should say that numerous benign sources for FDG uptake in the musculoskeletal system can be mistaken for aggressive or malignant processes if the bone is not fully evaluated on the CT portion of the bed CT. And this is one of the advantages of bed CT that it has bed and the CT. So you can go to the CT images, look carefully for the site of uptake it may not be a metastatic disease. Then common examples for increased uptake, which is not secondary to malignancy, is fractures, degenerative disc disease, osteophytes, and infection as well. And also metabolically active benign bone lesions like osteoma, for example, and also soft tissue lesions. On the opposite hand, that low-grade malignancies can be mistaken for benign lesions because they are not that metabolically active.